It's great to be back for episode nine of Use It or Lose It. We are here at the beautiful Wein Bar for the English speaking people. It's Wine Bar uh, at Val de Vie Estate, beautiful estate. And what we have today, or who we have today as a guest, is the most famous and wealthiest homeowner no. at Valdivie. <laughs> That's obviously after Ray Nietling, because he's probably the most famous. Oh, yeah. But after oh, him, oh. Vili LaRue. Oh, yeah. Springbok fullback, 70 test caps for the box. Absolutely fantastic guy. We played golf against him today, and we couldn't beat him. How's it, Vili? Hello, guys. Thank you for, for having me on the show. Um, uh, yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> Yeah. Really, for those, I mean, obviously, we didn't lose either. It was a stalemate. It was a tie. Yeah, it was, it was a tie. stalemate. Ty, um, soon to be a homeowner in Val de Vie. Is that, uh, is the rumor true? Roof is on the house yet? Yeah, uh, so the roof is on, um, building. Uh, hopefully, the, the building is um, done in March. So, I'm uh, really excited for that so I can play some golf and, uh, yeah, just get away. Will you, uh, so we've got your, um, We've got your golf partner here as well. We've got a crowd today <laughs> for the show. Would you like to elaborate on the um, contribution that your partner made? Um, or, or, or rather not? Rather not, actually. But he was there for uh, emotional support today, I would say. Okay. Uh, yeah. He had one par on 18 holes. Uh, yeah. That was his job. <laughs> and, uh, he drove the buggy a bit here and there. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, but I played uh, alone today, but well, it was good. Was well, good he, he wasn't the caddy, right? He was actually playing yeah. with us. No, he we, was my partner. Yeah, he wasn't the caddy. He, wasn't the caddy. he was a plus one, but the shape of him is more like a plus three. Plus, <laughs> yeah. Plus three persons, <laughs> yeah. For those who know him in the nose, Richard van Dijk. Yeah, Reggie. Yes, Reggie. It was great having Reggie um, playing with us. Well, not playing uh, with us, driving with us. Accompanying uh, us. Yeah, accompanying us, because from a social point of view, he, uh, he um, added... He added a lot. Um, talking about as, from a social point of view, Vili, like obviously, you know, our, our viewers will, will see you now. You're here in a, you know, we said, yeah, at, at uh, Weinbar, a beautiful, beautiful place. But um, you've just come back from, from the, the rugby championship tour. You guys have basically been in a bio bubble for close to 17 weeks. How is it to actually be back in civilization and being able to interact and just see people? Yeah, so everything started back in June when we played Georgia. The bubble started then. So we were in the hotel. Yeah. We weren't allowed to leave the hotel. Um, the girls were allowed to come in to join us and then they had to leave. But it was strict COVID process. Protocols, yeah. All the tests, all those things. And then when the Lions was finished, um, the next day we had to leave for P, the rugby championship had started. So then the, we had to prepare for the next Argentina game already. So there wasn't a lot of uh, celebrating the win against yeah. the Lions. Uh, we had to go into the next competition. Um, and then we had to go overseas and play Australia, New Zealand over there. So it was it was quite a hectic schedule, busy. Um, but being back home, seeing the family, yeah. playing some golf with friends, having my partner Reggie always with me, we haven't lost. <laughs> so it's good. Um, yeah, just being back in civilization has been so nice. Um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a hell of a 17 weeks, but uh, yeah, glad to be back here and seeing everyone. But will you tell us, I mean, how tough is it? I mean, because I could only do rugby a couple of days a week, yeah. you know. The rest of the week, I found all my energy by leaving the hotel. Yeah. I mean, going on sightseeing trips with John as my, my host normally, you know, for half a day until his body got sore. Playing golf <laughs> on your off day. Yeah. What do you do? There was even a week where you guys did training within your room, video sessions in your room when you had the 12 positive COVID tests. What do you do when you've got some time off? So we, some of us had some PlayStations that helped, definitely yeah. helped a lot. Um, then we played golf online on the PlayStation against each other. So that, uh, that, that's good fun. You talk over the mics and then we just play, me and Lewitt and Damien and Andre, we all just played PlayStation the whole time. Um, then that week was there that uh, whenever we, the guys got COVID, uh, when there was a Georgia game, so we had three days in our rooms training. So they have a like a live video session, yeah. and Andy would do the training session, so we could follow. If you want to join in, you you could join in, and you could put your your your, your video recording on, and you yeah. could like the guys are standing there in the jockeys and just dancing and being <laughs> stupid on the on the video call. Some guys wouldn't put their videos on, but they would say they would be doing the session, but. You never know. They're usually the, the fours, right? I was one of them. I put the video <laughs> off. But I was there. I could yeah, hear yeah. them all and hear what they were doing. 
Um, so yeah, it, it was tough not to not to be able to go play golf on your off day, which is for us in rugby, it's it's what we we look forward like to as well. Like, yeah. It's an institution. Yeah, 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 it, it has to it has to happen. Uh, when we got to Australia, eventually <laughs> after our two weeks in quarantine, the first two weeks after that, the last three weeks, we it was normal. We were allowed to go out, go to even just to go to a coffee shop was yeah. was next level for us. We were so excited. We even jumped over the fence that was there when they they said we are allowed out now, um, and then we could go play golf and everything started coming back to normal. So yeah, it's been tough, uh, but yeah. Yeah. Look, 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 Willy. We'll 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 go into you know your career a little bit more. We'll um, we'll touch a little bit on the on the Lions series as well. But but just tell the because I I don't think the viewers really understand how difficult it must have been that Lions series. You know now taking into account you haven't played together as a Springbok team for the whole of 2020. Now you go into a Lions series, which is a massive occasion. Yeah. Um, but you you playing it under such strict conditions, and and I remember you know as Kala alluded to now, you know when you go on tour, it's like it's lacky, it's lucky to go you know after training go to a coffee shop, you know you, you usually play cards or whatever in the coffee shop, or you go out for a drink or you play golf, uh, um, etc. Whereas now you know in this lines you literally move from hotel to training field to hotel to playing field. That was it, right? That was it. Yeah. So it was exactly that. We went. Training at HBC, so we, the whole tournament was in Cape Town. Everything was Cape Town Stadium. So we trained at Province at HBC, drove back back in the hotel. You can't go out of the hotel. You can't order food. Um, just hotel food the whole time and stuff. Um, some of just want some sushi once a week. There's just something normal. Yeah. Um, no golf. Then play on the weekends the game. And luckily after the games we got bries when we come back. So that we look forward to having a bry after bry, the bry. game coming back Saturday. at the hotel next to the pool, having a bry. Uh, but like you can't go out, you can't see family, you can't enjoy it with them. Just to say hello, maybe after a game quickly. There was nothing like that. So it was very different, but very challenging. And uh, yeah, just just glad we got it done. Um, wasn't a lot of crowd. There was a few people in the stadium. It wasn't normal. Not like 09 when everyone was here yeah. and it was crazy. So it was a big difference playing in <coughs> silence. Yeah. Very, very challenging as well. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was it was tough. And um, like me and John, we were fortunate enough to be there and watch that Lion series. That second test match. Mm. Um, yeah, obviously you guys haven't played for a while, but that intensity in that game. Yeah. I mean that was proper the box that was amazing and it just imagine like obviously we always say this when we refer to this line series if you had you know 60,000 people there yeah. but like for me it was one of the few times where you see a box side emotionally charge up yeah. it wasn't just we're doing our job we're good at what we do there was serious feeling in that match yeah, no there was definitely after the after the first game when we lost that game it, it was it, like this was the do or die situation if you lose the second one it's over um, and that's what no one wants that uh, and everyone knew that uh, we had a it was a tough week it was a hard week but I think everyone knew what they had to do and uh, yeah for me it was my favorite game as well it was the second game it just it just how it played out how we played all together how we stood up for each other um, and then we got the job done but it was yeah it was on a different level emotionally physically it was just everyone was just on the next level next step in that game um, so focused no one wants to make a mistake, but not scared to do as well. Um, and then, yeah, and, and we played well enough to to get the job done in that game. So, really, I, th I think it's fair to say that the second test match was was by far the best performance by the box. And and kind of, uh, you know, the feeling was always going into the first test match that the, the box might be a little bit underdone. But that first off, in that first test match, you, you guys were totally dominant as well, right? But were you a bit surprised or, or not really? Well... We haven't had a lot of time together. We had meetings. Everyone is all over the world. Guys in the UK based, guys in Japan, some is in South Africa. So you have, you've got online meetings. That's basically like your training. We talk through stuff and stuff like that. So it's not like a, a full team session together. And then we got together in June in Bloom in a camp. So the first time we were five guys for the first week. And the other guys were still playing for their franchises and overseas. And then the first time we trained together was the first week of the Georgia test, actually. So we had that game to prepare, then COVID struck. Mm. Then he had to book a other time for the SAA game. So that was basically another test as well. 
Um, and, and the guys got out there and produced a, a great performance in that, that yeah. first SIA game. And then we got into the first half of the first test where we were in control, played in the right areas. Um, try here, they could have gone our way. It would have been maybe a different story. But yeah, we were to totally, like, we played so well in control and stuff. And then, yeah, second half, stage rugby, make one or two mistakes and then the other team capitalizes. And uh, yeah, so. And, and like, obviously, in that first game, what we were worried about is not actually the box intensity, is worrying when the pressure's on, you know, who steps up to the plate, who you listen to, when does the team come together? When you take, how do you get that negative um, outcome and change it into a positive? And when you're under that pressure all the time and you match fit and you get into those scenarios, it's yeah. so easy. Yeah. But there's an element, if you haven't experienced for, for a while, where you're just standing there and everyone's looking at each other. Yeah. And even if you do say the right things, which you probably did, no one, it goes in no one's ears. Everyone's just thinking, what's happening? Yeah. What's happening? I'm getting nervous. I'm getting more nervous. Yeah, that, that, that is. A, sometimes it goes your way. The other times it doesn't. They get two or three penalties in a row. They kick for, for touch. They score a try. They get two or three penalties as well. So that just adds up the whole time. And then sometimes you feel like you haven't done anything wrong, but you are 10 points down. Yeah. Yeah. So now you maybe feel like you have to start playing a bit more or take more chances in the game. And then it doesn't come off you. You you try and go wide, and you they they get another penalty maybe, and it's another three points like that. So it is hard if, if you haven't played a long time. I think there's there's many leaders in the team. I think when the guys speak, everyone listens. You don't know if everyone listens or everyone's focused there, but there's not a crowd and stuff. So I think when they speak, when they spoke in the in the Lions areas, they, everyone had to listen because yeah. there wasn't other noises or distractions yeah. or anything on the field. Um, but yeah, it's definitely it's tough if you haven't played a long time together. Yeah, and you know you've only got one chance. Hey, eh? Lions here is so so special. Look, we we this show is not really about going too deep into the rugby tactics and all of that. We wanna we wanna get to know Vili Larue a little bit better because uh, actually, I mean, you made your debut back in 2013. I can remember against Italy, but I mean, I don't think that people really knows what Larue. happened before 2013. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but also we yeah. you haven't seen many interviews with Vili or anything no. like that. So we're actually extremely fortunate to have him on the show. <laughs> yeah, even though his, his um, agent Reggie is charging us a hell of a lot. So Scala, I think let's go. Let's go quick fire questions. Ooh. We get to know Vili <clears throat> a little bit more, and then we're gonna then we're gonna find out where it all started. Okay, Vili. So this little segment, quick fire questions, brought to you by Vodacom. Okay. And it's if it's possible, as quickly as all, or simple as possible. possible okay. You don't have to elaborate. Okay. And we'll start off with a, a easy one: torpedo or drop punt? Torpedo. Sexiest thing in rugby must be right. more difficult, probably. Strand or Valdivie? Strand. <laughs> you got to Strand. go. There you go, to Root. Strand. No, Root. 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 And the strand. I was born, that's my place, yes. <laughs> and uh, this is where it gets confusing. Left or right? Left. When you, only when you're kicking, though. Yeah, everything and else. And everything else? Is right there. Yeah. So just explain that. So you kick left with it, everything else is right there. Right writing, right, golf. Writing. Uh, if I had to bat right, bowling right. right. And if you have to kick right? I can, grubber right. <laughs> yeah. I, won't, I won't say I would kick for touch right, yeah. If okay. Long. Steak or sushi? Sushi. Japan or the UK? Japan. <laughs> Since we played some golf, there's a golf question coming in. Drive for show or putt for dough? Yeah, drive. You were driving drive. today. Yeah, beautiful, drive. eh? Maybe a little bit harder, Paul Roos or Helderberg? Yeah, Paul Roos. And now this one is where it gets super confusing, and I might have even missed one, but I was trying just to say, listen, you know, which franchise did you enjoy playing the most? Before you answer it, I'm going to go, VPA, Cheetahs, Boerland, Griekos, or Sharks? No, they don't play for VPA, first yeah. of all. I was only in the Craven group. Week. Yes. Yes. True. Ah. Most fun I had, definitely Cheetahs. Cheetahs? Yeah. When you were contracted to Greek was? True. Yeah. <laughs> but I haven't played Greek was yet. I played Cheetahs first. Cheetahs first. We'll go into all the... And, and I'm it, confused, okay. but yeah, I'm thank confused you. confused okay. as well. But our viewers are not confused. And Vili, seriously, we had the most questions ever. <laughs> People um, um, dialing in and sending in videos for questions. So okay. uh, credit to you for that. Here's two questions for you. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go... That one first... 
So just play the... Play top right there. Like top right, just press play. Hi, uh, good afternoon, uh, Zanan Skalk. Hi, uh, Vali. Just wanted to know, man, um, yes, yeah. Chief, Chief, why couldn't you come and play for the Stormers, bro? We, we, we dearly would wanted you to wear the famous Stormers colors. <laughs> yes, Zan, um, the other day, uh, in Skalk, who the man so uh, English prat, man? This is who the English prat, man? I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. In the case, lovely program, guys. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. He didn't, he didn't say his name. There. Before you, well, maybe answer that. Why did he, Why did you ever play for the Stormers? I always wanted to play for the Stormers. To be honest, obviously growing up in Strand and from Cape Town, um, went with my dad always to Newlands to watch you guys play. Um, so I always wanted to play for the Stormers, but ne never got opportunity. I got. I was in the squad. Twenty. 10, I yeah, think, yeah, 2010, yeah. we were in the big, in the preseason squads. Pre I was holding right. bags for everyone to tackle you and try and, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. They didn't like you a lot there, so they were trying to run over you and stuff. So I was there and during preseason with the big medicine balls, picking up, carrying yes, around. The little, I was little all those strong, the strong man. It's and, always fun, the preseason. Yeah. Preseason was fun. Um, and then we played, we played against Marty's. Uh, I played a game for the preseason team against Marty's, but... <laughs> I played fly off that time, uh, but that was my last game as well for the province in yeah. the province gear. And uh, yeah, and then went back to Boerland. And school career fly off was your position, eh? Yeah, the whole school, school, I've always played fly off. Paul was fly off, was kicking goal as well, kicking off, kicking touch. Yeah, I did everything at school. And tell me now, there was, a, you went missing for a phase. Eh? You went to France, didn't you? So, at the Racing Metro. Yeah, so after school, after school first went, uh, there was a Bola, like the same as the province academy, there was a Boland Academy. So I went Boland Academy after school. Oh, which Louis, uh, No, not HBC. Uh, uh, 2008. 2008, yes. 2007 matric, 2008 went uh, Boland Academy. Where Louis Kuhn was still was part of it there. Yeah, okay. um, played there, played Wellington Club Rugby as well in, in the Boland. You had to drive Saturdays, you get a 400 rand, and then you go to Robertson and you play uh, uh, Wellington Robertson in Robertson. That's that's quite an experience, uh, <laughs> but I enjoyed it. Um, the year after 08, I, I got opportunity to go to Marty's, um, play there. The, didn't get opportunity to play Varsity Cup, but got opportunity to play um, first team for Marty's a few games, and then Darby Sneijman, helped me to get into Racing Metro's Espa side over there because they got an injury so you can get someone in when you get an oh, injury. Nice. So then, and was that like for the, the academy, the for, academy yeah. team? So you could sign, you could group. play for the senior team as yeah. well. You signed, but then I played Espa as under-23s back in Paris. So I went over, I got there, just when Franz Stein got there after they won, after he's won the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, and yeah. he signed there as well, 09. So we got the. And you together. guys won the same um, salary there, eh? for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, for I wish, I wish we were on the same salary. But we were, we were staying in the same hotel. Yeah. But funny story, we stayed in the same hotel. We became good friends there. Um, we played PlayStation that time. We did a lot of things. Um, and what do you I, mean a lot of things? No, 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 we won't what? go into that. <laughs> the thing is, we, we, were, we had a, a small TV in the hotel room. Very small, not, not big. And then I said, France, we, we can't see on this. We're playing FIFA together in the team. Yeah. I said, France, we, we can't see on this TV. It's honestly, we need something bigger. And then it's literally, we just stood up and walked out, drove the car to the shop. We bought a 65-inch <laughs> <laughs> Samsung TV in the <laughs> back of the car, car, into the hotel room, set it up for me, yeah. started playing FIFA on that. And then France had to leave on the weekend to play for the senior team. I'm only playing Sunday late afternoon because yeah. I play Espoir. So I was just staying in his room looking after the looking PlayStation, the TV. the TV, waiting for him to come back. Yeah. <laughs> and Bernard Leroux, that now plays for, for France, yes. well, I mean, he, I think he's close to 50 test matches, yeah, might have been yeah, over 50 yeah. already. Um, he went over with you, didn't yes, he? Yes, so he was, yeah. Bernard got there a week after me. Okay. So me and Bernard moved into the, we stayed together in the same apartment there as well for, for the time when I was there. And he's still there, he's playing for France. Yeah. He actually made his debut a week after me for France. I make it a week before him for, for the box. For so. Yeah. Yeah. Did he have a big TV? We had a decent sized TV, oh, okay. and a de decent sized TV. Otherwise, we just go to France's house. So now you've you've you've, uh, and the, the, this one was actually leading on to the the, the previous video that I showed you, because you you started in 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 France, played Boland, Greek West, Cheetah, Sharks, warm up <laughs> game for Western Province, Toyota in Japan. 
yeah. wasps in England. Uh, West Cannon. West Cannon. Cannon in Japan. In 1617, 2016-17. There's a, there's a pretty, pretty cool question. Yeah. Top, top right. Hi, Willy. It's Phil here. I'm a huge fan of yours. My um, question for you is, after watching you electrify audiences all the way from Volante Grucos through to uh, Wasps and the Blitz, which, uh, which of the clubs that you've played for holds the most special place in your heart? Cheers. Yeah. Uh, if, if you could single out one, I mean, it's always so difficult. I, w- I would say at the start, the, definitely Cheetahs because of, of the opportunity they gave me and yeah. the freedom they gave me to. They didn't care if you make mistakes. If it comes off, everyone loves you. At that time, when it didn't come off, people would still love you, not, not these days. Um, but then definitely going to Wasps, just where I was a bit down, I was left out of the Springbok squad. I um, feel like my rugby was going, not going anywhere and I wanted to experience something different. Just the, everything I've learned there and all the guys I've played with there and the relationships you build there, I think it was a very special club for me uh, in the UK, going to Wasp. And then currently at the Yota as well, very special for me, close to my heart there. Do you have to say that, eh? I have to, that's my club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my club, yeah. Now, you, you, know, you mentioned you, you prefer, you did say it on screen now, you prefer Strand to Valdivie, <laughs> even though you're building a house here in Valdivie. Um, that, that's where it started for you. Is that, was rugby always part of your life? Yeah. Was rugby always a, a career that you thought you, you would follow? Or, yeah. or where did it... Um, yeah, definitely. Primary like, school? Where, where did you go primary school? Lochnerov. Lochnerov, like, yeah. yeah. We used to play against them. Hugo Rest yeah. Lochnerov. Yeah, we yeah. also played there. Tough game. Tough yeah. game to play against. Um, so I went, after Lochnerov, I went Strand. I was in Strand High School for three months. Okay. Um, then I got opportunity to go to Paul Ruiz in, so I had to leave just before the June exams. Uh, they, did they buy you? Not by. <laughs> Paul Ruiz bought you there. No, 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 no. I wouldn't say it like well, that. They, they just gave me a, a, a better opportunity. Better opportunity. Better opportunity. Well, they gave you opportunity. Better yeah. opportunity to go to Paul Ruiz. And um, so, yeah, I went to Paul Ruiz. Uh, it was amazing. I uh, learned a lot there. Um, but it, like still from Strand, uh, it was always always a passion for me to, to play rugby. I always... My mom and dad, my dad played for, played rugby as well. He was a lock. He played for Alderberg and stuff. So I always went to Ball Boy on Saturdays yeah. there in the Strand, the Alderberg Rugby Club. Um, it was my favorite thing to do on weekends and always watch the rugby. It wouldn't miss a game Friday mornings. Sometimes wouldn't, would miss the first two classes of school as well to watch that, that 8.15 kickoff game, in New yeah, Zealand. Super or, rugby, yeah. yeah, always, I would always watch that game as well somewhere. Um, so yeah, it's always been a passion for me and I would always, was always I wanted to play rugby, and that was I don't think I can do anything else uh, besides playing a bit of rugby. Like you, I mean, like people obviously see this is an amazing thing when you you get guests on the show. You always see the nice part of it. You, know, you see the yeah. guy playing for the box. But you don't get the backstory that often. And like Willie's backstory is, I mean, it's not run of the mill. Yeah. You know, there's some of us you you know like John. You 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 finish school, you. You basically go from S under 19, S under 20, and then, you know, through injuries, like mm. his resilience was born out of that. But your resilience was just through sheer fortitude that mm-hmm. I'm going to make this. You know, it can't be VP Spelly. I want yeah. to play at Western Province. I don't get a contract now. I go to Borland. Yeah. Go to Racing Metro for an opportunity. You know, come hold bags for a whole preseason. Still don't make it. Play your first Test match 2013. But for me, the most amazing thing that came out of that 2015 Rugby World Cup is you pl- played with a broken scapula. 2019. Sorry, 2019 World Cup, sorry. Yeah. Played with a broken scapula. Yeah, that, that was Peter Steph's fault in the, in the quarterfinal. <laughs> we both were dying yeah. for the same ball and uh, uh, didn't end well for me. But uh, Did like, you catch that one? <laughs> I caught the ones before that, <laughs> well, but yeah. after that I, I struggled a bit no, to catch yeah, a few yeah. of them. <laughs> okay, I had a, it's fair. fine, we all make mistakes. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it is tough running or diving into Peter Steph the toy. Yeah. Someone is going to get hurt. Uh, Nicknamed Spira. Yes, and then uh, yeah, they managed me very well through the week. They At the box, it's like if you can't train on Monday, they won't pick you for the weekend. So yeah. it was like... <coughs> I can't lift my arm, everything is numb down here. It still feels funny. When I go over here, it's still like dead skin over here. It feels very funny. Yeah. Um, then I, I 
I practice, you just strap and you go. And it's obviously it's a World Cup semi final. And then you just continued and, and knocked a few balls as well in the semi final. But we got through it. Luckily, we won. And then uh, in the final, uh, I think it, most of, loads of people have seen it where me and Rossi had, uh, had a conversation yeah. about the final. And I was like, uh, I was just scared I'm going to drop the team at a, at, a, at a very, at a point where you can't turn it back. Uh, so, I told him, Rossi, if you want to pick someone else to play this final, I fully back you and I understand because obviously I'm not 100%. Um, and I'm gonna, I will be scared to make a mistake and stuff and you mess it up for the team. Obviously, you can get a lot of World Cup finals to play. And so, but then he literally just brought it under the table and it wasn't even a conversation. And, yeah. uh, and then we just <coughs> we went on. And then as soon as I got onto the final on the field, it was like you forget amazing. about anything. And then after again, it's hanging and it's funny and uh, yeah. So and you had a you had an amazing game in the final. Um, and, and do you do do you think I'm actually going to go back to you know you and, and I joked about it, but you said you got the opportunity to go to Paul Ruiz. Mm. Do you think in a way because because a lot of the time it's about just getting an opportunity. You know, if yeah. you if you probably stayed in in Strand High School, who knows if you would have ever played for for South Africa. Yeah. But do you think like that that kind of uh, commitment, that kind of you know fight that you had with within you, to be able to play through the pain in the semi final, play through the pain in the in the final, you know, stem from, you know, back in the day when you you got the opportunity, you had to fight for your place, and you had to prove that you that you're good enough. I think it was it was very similar. Yeah, you, you like I always had to fight to prove people wrong. Um, I would say at the start of my career, you like people would say you're too small, you won't play test rugby, or you never play for the box, it, it won't fit you. Uh, the type of game they play in the game plan, maybe it won't fit you. Um, so I had to deal with all of that always when I was growing up, playing for Boerland, uh, playing the attractive style like that. They say you only attack, you can't do anything else. International rugby, you need you need to you need to be like uh, kicking, defense, everything, uh, reading the game, all of those things. So. I think I grew up with that, and I think yeah, I was. He definitely thought about how you, how you, you got to to this point in your career, and uh, I don't think you'll get an opportunity like this again. So it, it's your time now to use it and to, even if you are not 100%, um, go with it and see Can what happens. All, yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, I've got one more video here. I think that's um, that's pretty pretty fitting. Um, and, uh, you know, just around the coaches and, and maybe that chat that you had with, with Rossi as well. How's it, John? How's it, Scala? Uh, first of all, thank you for an amazing show. Well done. Check uh, amazing John, show. I, hope the, I hope the knee is still good. <laughs> um, as you can see, <laughs> I know my rugby. I've got a Springbok cap and the Stormers jersey. <laughs> so for you two guys, well done for representing the best two rugby teams in the world. Um, then uh, I've got two questions for Willy. Willy, welcome to the show. My first question is, uh, just before the 2019 World Cup final, you told uh, Rossi um, you will understand if you if he if he doesn't pick you for the for the um, first 15 for the final. Um, and then he, uh, he backed you all the way. Um, he showed the whole team the contributions you make. What's your opinion um, as a player? Uh, what influence does that have if a, if a coach shows he, he trusts in you as a player? Then uh, my second question is, uh, you can play as fly half, wing or fullback. If you uh, were the coach of your own team, where would you pick yourself? Um, Joe, that's my two questions. <laughs> Thanks for the good show. Uh, all the way from Eastern Free State, Bethlehem. <laughs> I hope the English wasn't too bad. <laughs> nice guys, have you a good did, one. You did well. I mean, that's better, better than the Duplessis brothers. Yeah, I'm from sure, same time. I'm sure he never goes out with that Stormers jersey. In <laughs> yeah, I love him, Bethlehem. Um, the, uh, thanks, cameraman, for the laugh. Um, so there's a question. I mean, if you had your own team, where would you select yourself? Obviously, if you had your own team, you um, wouldn't win anything. Yeah. But if you had... No, we would play attractive rugby. And, um, <laughs> very nice you're an attractive for, guy. For right? the people yeah. to enjoy it. Yes. Um, uh, I, would, I would think I would still stay at, at fullback. Um, 
just just getting into into the first receiver um, or in the game, get yourself yeah. the hands on your ball. Don't stay stay out wide the whole time. Uh, that's your involved. preferred. You, you fullback is your preferred. You, yeah, I that's would say definitely you enjoy the most. definitely fullback, but then. Getting my ball, the ball, my ball. Getting the, your balls, the, yeah. The ball. <laughs> Getting your balls, the man. The ball in my hands yeah. and uh, taking. Do you like to have your balls in your hands? I'm not even going to go. I'm not even going to go. Just getting involved in the game. Um, getting your hands on the ball. <laughs> and then. You see, like, uh, how many open? Uh, surely after this, I said, even by now, people from Knater. Who's Knater? So, yeah. enjoyed fly off. Um, sometimes when I play cheetahs, uh, I attacked at 12 at our starter moves. I yeah. uh, quite enjoyed that. Yeah. Uh, it was fun to do something different. Even though I played wing, I, would I was attacking at second receiver. Uh, enjoyed the getting the ball at second receiver. Uh, you, get, you get more time, you get to see the space, get to put the guys away. Uh, that's, that's the sort of thing I started enjoying when I was a bit younger, I would say. When I was wing and stuff, you enjoy scoring tries. Obviously, yeah, everyone yeah. enjoys that. Um, so, yeah, I would say definitely fullback, but get involved as much as he I can. He definitely as... scored more tries on the wing than he would do a fullback. Yeah, yeah I think my last try was about 2013 when I started. Playing so, on the wing. <laughs> yeah, playing on the wing. So, uh, yeah, I, I not scored a lot of tries, but definitely more on the wing. Yeah, yeah you had very creative centres there in life. They created a lot. <laughs> I no, um, no, we'll edit that out. We need to bring up our, our, our fans in. Hey, Billy, it's Kareem from Ottawa, Canada. Canada. Um, my question is, when you started to play for the Bucks, you just burst onto the scene and had such an electric style of play. I just wanted to know if you uh, styled your play after someone uh, or did you develop it yourself? And if you did style it after someone, like who that was? Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Jean and Scala. I love the show. Uh, bye from Canada. Um, so, but, but, but interestingly... Like, when you started playing, if you think, you know, back when you were playing for the Cheetahs, even, even when you were back at the Sharks, uh, the, you know, your style of play has, has changed considerably. Yeah. And that's due to a, a lot of things, you know, coaching in a way, you know, aging, get, being more mature, et cetera, et cetera. The, the inspiration for the way that you play, where... Where did that come from? How did you, how did you uh, decide that you want to be an attacking player? And when did you decide? Okay, well, you know, I probably need to yeah. need to balance it out a little bit more. So I would definitely say, Andre <coughs> Joubert had a big influence the way he played. Kristin Kalinen. Yeah. Kalinen. Kalinen. Is that Daryl? Yes, Daryl Kalinen. No, my. <laughs> No, but I, I mean, he was a good cricketer as well, eh? Yeah. It's also that. Like, 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 <laughs> that's a hold it, man. It's also they, they stayed in the hotel for a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. They stayed in the Cullinan. Yeah, so he stayed in the Cullinan. Yes, Chris and Cullinan. Cullinan is the cricketer. I don't know. I know. And then I really enjoyed the way Joe Rockathoko played as well. I really, it was. Really looked up to those guys when they were playing as well. And yeah, I know all of you played a lot of against them as well. But yeah, I got some inspiration there. Carlos Spencer as well. Just under the legs, that ball, cross kick yes. under his poles, a long ball behind his poles, Blues Crusaders. Just little things like that. You try and pick up everywhere and then you, you try and implement it in your game. How's it, Billy? This is Adam from Joe Berg. Um, big fan of yours, though I think our friend Phil's is your biggest fan. He named his fantasy team after you, the Red Hot Philly Peppers. <laughs> the question for you, how has fullback play changed for you in the last uh, 10 years with rugby <coughs> changing so much, like from strategically and tactically? Yeah. Thanks. Has uh, it changed a lot? I think so. I think it's a, it's a lot more eyeball catching. Obviously, kicking and trying to catch the eyeball again. Yeah. Um, these days, when, when you kick off, you 80% you, of the time, you're going to receive a box kick back. So yeah. you have to be ready for that. Um, I think the, the defenses are better, so you don't have that, that much space always. On turnover, yes, it, it might be like the old days where you can, you can run around and, and play like with freedom and stuff. Um, no, I think it, it's definitely changed a lot, the rugby as well, and, and the fullback position. Now with the new laws, the 50-22, where you can't be you can't be too flat up 
then they just kick it over yeah. you and they get the line out. So I think a lot of things is changing. Yeah. Um, you have to position yourself well. You have to you have to try and read the fly before they do something. If you if you picked up in the week, how they when he, uh, what he does what he does when he kicks and stuff like that. So you have to get triggers before that before the before the game. Uh, Maybe get a trigger where he always throws a long ball, where he grabs off his left foot, um, stuff like that. You have to try and pick up in the week before you play a team. Yeah. Um, so you, you're trying to get the upper end with him before while you're in the game. So trying to read them before they do something. Well, there's, two, there's two sides. The one is obviously, you know, the way we defend with 13 men up, mm. there's a lot more pressure on you. Um, and you've got to have the wing on strength, so you've got to be continuously coaching. Space to cover. Space to cover, because there's always, you know, yeah. Two thirds of the field's always open, you know. Um, in the old days, if someone kicked the ball that went over your head, bounced out, you would have said, yeah. "Fair play." It's our lineup. You're receiving a box kick. Now with the 50-22, you can't do that. Yeah. And then for me, why I always like you and pick you as a 15 is because because us as the box play such a conservative style. We need players who wants to play. We need players who sneaks opportunities, sniffs opportunities, because otherwise. We won't create anything, but you need players that step up and say, listen, it's on now. We've received the ball. Yeah. Give it to me. I'll do something magic. Yeah. Do, do you feel confident also when you, when you slot into that, you know, sometimes on the blind, into that yeah. first receiver position? You know, I always think of that, you know, that outside gap, you know, attacking yeah. that outside yeah. channel and creating the overlap there. Because yeah. that, that feels as if that's when you're at your very best, when you can get into the game, yeah. see those opportunities, make those passes, the grabbers, yeah. you know, all of that. No, definitely. It's For me, it's it's to get your hands quickly on the ball as soon as you can, get involved, get as many touches. Um, you're going to make mistakes. It's just to get move on with that. Uh, you don't have a right to be upset or otherwise, that's what that's what Rassi said before the final. If you're going to make a mistake, you, you don't have a right to, to be down. You have to move on, otherwise you're dropping the country. So... That quite stuck with me after that as well. For um, for me, I, I like to take the opportunities, the chances if I see something, and most of them they back me. Even though if it's sometimes not the right uh, the right choice to take, um, so I'm always there on the field scanning. You, you're scanning on the field, seeing when you get a turnover ball, who's second last defender, third last defender. If I see a prop flanker. Sometimes there that I think is a bit slower. That's where I would go and attack. Obviously, if you see a center, center wing there, it, it, it might be a different story. Then there might be space behind. The most amazing thing about that is because when the defensive line resets so quickly, if there's a ruck, it's gone. Yeah. Opportunity's gone. So yeah. you've got to move that contact point from wherever the turnovers yeah. occurs. And the second pass, preferably, yeah. we need to hit Willie. Really, even if he comes from 50 meters back, yeah. you need yeah. to hit a playmaker, your second pass. And your, second, yeah. your, your playmaker then... Maker, yeah. He goes, where's the space? Yeah. You know, is it in behind? Is yeah. it running? You know, but like if it's one, two, three, four passes, no, you've run out of time and yeah. space. You've, and got, a, you've got a sh very short opportunity to attack that space. Yeah. And if it's not two, and I mean two nice passes, it can't be a, a pass here down or yeah. a pass up here. It takes a time away and it gives them time to get back into the, the defense line. So two nice quick passes into space. And then if some of us in front of you, if it's behind, the space is behind. You play that space. If it's out wide, you get, you get the ball there as soon as you can. The relationship between you and your wingers, because that's an important one as well, you know, on the field and, and in terms of the, the tactics that, that, that you just discussed. But, um, you know, we've seen, we've seen the rise of, of Makazola Mapimpi. We've seen mm. Cheslin just being absolutely on fire on the world stage. Sabu Nkosi is a you know a special player as well. You know what? What's your? I can remember someone telling me about you know the influence that that you actually had on on someone like uh, Mapimpi, yeah. and you know you being the the senior guy within that role, and um, you know he's been he's been fantastic. But do you do you quite cherish those um, those relationships and being able to to transfer you know some of your experience and some of your knowledge to them? Yeah, I think when it, where it comes to mind is I think 2018 against England where it was a piwe. Deante and uh, Sabu's first tests when we played England in, in Johannesburg. And we went 20 down early. We were 23 3 down uh, early and, and we got back into the game. I think they both scored tries in that game. Uh, and I think they just, after that, it was like uh, the people like, do you, like, how much do you talk to the guys on the field? Um, what do you say to them? How, how do you control them? And I think that comes, we'll talk on the field and I'll try and help them with their positioning and 
I'll give them freedom to go up and, and make a read on the defense. Even if they make the wrong one, they'll know I'll be outside them to cover. And then if they get that ball wide, obviously they back into the line swimming behind me. Um, and with those type of guys, I think for them, they just want the ball in their hands very early and quick and, and they do magic. Um, <clears throat> same with my Pimpy, same with Cheslin. Um, I think we, we've come to understanding. I think they all know. They know when, you, when I shout at them. They know when I say certain things. They know they have to get deeper. Sometimes they know they can't shoot out of the line. They have to hold a bit. They give me time. Um, when I go up on this side, you know, the open, the blind side wing has to cover the kick space behind me. Um, little things like that, which you train in the week, we, you, like you do walk, walkthroughs with it. Yeah. Literally just walk it through and check if everyone's at the right position. So I think we are yeah, a good combination. I, 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 um, I can remember when you, when you started, Vili. Yeah. And, um, and, and obviously, you know, I was I was captain back then for the box, but like I think I was quite hard on you okay. at, at, at times when we played, and like you know, Vili really would do something, and you know that I might not agree with, and I always you know, <laughs> yeah. you know I, would shout, I would shout at him or whatever, but. And then sometimes he would make a mistake and then he'd know he'd, he'd yeah. made a mistake and then he'd just, he'd ignore me. He wouldn't make, he wouldn't make eye contact, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. And now, when I see him play now, I see so much of that now. He, he does the, exactly sa- the same, same stuff. stuff. And always yeah. the hand. Yeah. It's like the hand. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. The, no, he never, want, he never <laughs> wanted me to try stuff there. And I, like if you, you, you see the space, I wanted yeah. to have a go. Surely you gave him a try somewhere. No, he got yeah, loads of, of tries. Yeah, I got tries loads of tries. My first you. game, he got a try. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I, um, I would, I would like to think that you know I actually influenced you a little bit <laughs> in a positive way. Same body language, isn't it? Yeah. The two fingers. <laughs> yeah, no, I could, if I made a mistake, he, could, he was looking for me. And he, wanted to talk, he wanted to talk to me, but I was, I was just at the back. He, he, no, he wouldn't make eye contact. He couldn't get to me, so I was too far away <laughs> from him. So um, that was good. Not, uh, let's talk about criticism. <laughs> yeah. Because that's yeah. that's we a given. <coughs> we all we get, all it. get we've, it. Yeah, we've all had it. We've all had great games for the box. We've all had bad games for the box. Mm. But when it's bad, you know, our fans, our fans can be, you know, they can be quite intense. How do you, yeah, how do you, yeah. you know, and, and brutal? How do how do you deal with that? Um, I mean, it is hard sometimes. When I was started at the Cheetahs, those days, 2013, started with the box. I think when, when I did something good there, everyone loved you. And when I did something wrong there, people still found a way to love, like the, like the way I play. Yeah. And I just think how I progressed over the years. Now, they, I think sometimes they expect it always has to come off. And when it doesn't come off now, or you don't play well enough, then obviously supporters, they've, that's how it works. They've got bad stuff to say to you. So I think in the earlier days they were more forgiven to me than they are now. They're much yeah. harder on me now yeah. as they were at the start. Because you've been there so and so, yeah. so also as, we, really as, as we get older. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you, you just learn to deal with it. Then like I know if the coaches and my teammates back me because uh, they they always there for you and they the guys you go onto the field with. So uh, that's good. Hey, someone once told me, I said like regarding the criticism, you know, like from press and. You know, whoever, you know, supporters, you're never as good as they say you are, but you're also never as shit as, the, as yeah, they so. say you are. You're somewhere in this gray area in the middle. You're playing yeah. to a high level or you're playing to a lower level, and that's where you operate your whole career. And it's important to, to listen to the, the, the people that, you know, that you, that you trust, yeah, whose, yeah. whose opinion you trust, you know. So, yeah, so, so criticism is, is, is part and parcel of, of, the, ga- of the game. Um, but actually one question, and I'm going to, or the one one question before I uh, show you this video, the one question we didn't answer was previously when, when the coach yeah. backs you. Yeah. No, yeah, that's, I think that's, if you've got a coach that backs you, even though you make mistakes here and there, um, and he always sticks with you, he backs you to the end. Uh, the players as well, I think it's a big part as well when, you, when your team backs you. When you walk off the field and you can look your guys in the eye and they say, you've done your part, like yeah. that's what you, that's what you yeah. want to see and want to hear. Um, then it doesn't matter the noise on the outside. Uh, it's only that group and everyone that's Because those opinions count. Right? Yeah, so, yeah, so that, account, that, that counts for me. Yeah. The opposite's also true from a coach, Johnny. 
If he does not make it. If he does not make it. That's right. not like a, That's yeah. not such a lack of feeling. So you've had a few coaches. There we have a, a question from Austria. Hi, guys. Uh, There's a question for Valileru. This is Chris from Austria. Um, big supporter of you all. And a big supporter of Vili as well. Uh, Vili, my question to you is, you have played for a few teams now already. And um, right now, you are getting coached in Japan by Steve Hansen, as far as I understand. He's also a World Cup winning coach. So what would you say is the difference in coaching method between him and Rashi and for that matter, Jock? It, it'll be interesting to hear his insights or your insights regarding his coaching style. Gotcha. And um, yeah, what makes them different? Um, the different, I would say, Jock and Jock and Rossi, we we like to maul, and Anson he he, he wouldn't maul at all. So really, yeah. in Japan we don't maul at all. So that, that that's that's a big part. What I saw the difference between the coaches, how they approach the game. Uh, they would rather like a gin in the old days. They'll take it out of the loosey and yeah. play it off the top. You look like you're setting up the a ball in Japan. The one just to explain yeah. to you is one day the dummy yeah. dummy the ball and yeah. then they come up with Get options. Out. Yeah, so you, you look like you're going to ball and then the loosey gets out. Uh, I think that's what we we play a lot more in Japan. Where at the spring box, I, I think we tend to stick with our strings, our scrum and our mall. And uh, yeah, I think that that's definitely a, a big difference. So how, so how difficult is it, you know, you know, coaching and, and implementing those those techniques? And again, Hi, John and from, Scala, from thank Spain. you guys so much for the content. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm messaging you guys from Spain and I really appreciate what you guys put up because it keeps me in touch with what I love most. Um, so thank you. And my question to Vili is the set up in South Africa at the moment in terms of the South African team seems really organized and really interesting at a new level of rugby and so what I'm interested to know is how hard is it to take that level of coaching and include it in your game um, you know because you're playing in split seconds and mini seconds and micromanagement and dis small decisions and how how hard is it or easy is it to take the information that's given to you and you can then put it into practice and and use it in that tiny little decisions that you have to make. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, love what you guys are doing and love you guys lots. Bye. Well, I think what he's saying is, um, I think as a rugby player, you, you tend to, you have to learn on the job. You have to learn quickly. You have to learn from coaching from whether they're from New Zealand, whether they're from South Africa, whether they, everyone's got a different philosophy yeah. or how they see the game, how they want to play the game, in what areas do they feel they can play the game. You, you get people that only want to play rugby in the opposition's half. Then you get coaches that think you're off, you're 22, you, you must start playing rugby, you must take risks. Um, I think you, you definitely have to learn on the job and if you can't adapt and learn, I think you'll find it hard to play international rugby and, and provincial rugby even. Yeah. So I think that's a, that's a thing that you definitely you, you have to learn and you take as much in where you can and you, you take that to your game or with your game and uh, yeah and try it on the field. Also, like I, th I feel your best coaches, by the end of the week, your whole team knows exactly what's what required from them. Mm. What is your three main things in each category? Good, good being messaging, yeah. Your, your, some coaches are technically magnificent but they never can have the whole team on the same same wavelength mm. you just lose the team um, a funny story once I, I played for Saracens one game and we went in with a plan and they said if it's on definitely not on <laughs> if it's definitely definitely on it's not on yeah. and they said if it's a six on two it's fucking not on <laughs> so basically we just went in with a kicking, kicking yeah. plan for a whole weekend <laughs> yeah. That was for four years you played like that. <laughs> I know. Um, hey, Billy, we get it, we get it, we get it, we get it, it worked. You got trophies. Um, got we're getting, we're really getting towards the end and, and, and the fun part. Do you, you've watched the show before, haven't you? I have. You have, yes. One of the big supporters. <laughs> uh, we're going to get Thank you the, um, uh, what do we call it again? What do we call it? Bad jokes. Oh, it's bad jokes. That's what it's called. We're going to get to that now. But before we get to that, you're 32 years old. 
You've won a World Cup. You've won Rugby Championship. You've you've played all over the world. I mean, what's next for you? Is is World Cup 2023 still? Is that a goal for you? Would you like to to stick around? Not to put you on the spot, but I am no. going to put you on the spot. Too. Would you like to be there? Do you think you've got a, a a role to play in nurturing and helping the youngsters coming through? I think. Uh... If the body allows it, uh, if I can keep up, uh, if I can still do my part um, and and not drop the team, um, I would definitely try my best to, to go and play uh, if that opportunity allows you. There are so many young guys coming through as well that's, that's playing unbelievable rugby. Um, so they're always pushing you and you have to stay on top of your game. Um, uh, but I'm I'm in Japan as well currently, so if if I get the call and I'm I'll be involved, I'll, I'll definitely definitely do that. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely. You don't you don't say no to the box, do you? No, it's hard to say no to the yeah. box. Yeah. So last last little video and a quite an interesting one. Hey guys, I was just wondering, who are your favorites for the Rugby World Cup? Nigel Owen says it's France. Who is it? Who's the favourite? from France, this message is from France. Well, How cool is that? Did he Broke say it, Nigel Owen France. says it's France? Yeah, apparently Nigel Owen says it's France. Yeah. And he's from France as well. Nah, oh, he's this, from, this France, guy's from yeah. France, yeah. yeah so he's Nigel's probably... not French. No, Nigel's not French. He would probably back the French as well, the he guy would. that asked the question. Do you reckon, um, do you reckon the box can go back to back? Um, definitely. Um, with the coaching staff, the players available, um, I think with the team that won the World Cup in 2019, I think there's about 80% of the same guys still there if, if they, they would continue to play until 2020. If they get selected. If, they, they if, get, that, yeah. if everyone gets selected. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think they've got the, the squad and the depth is there. Um, so I definitely think they, they, can, they can go. But you must, and Japan, I would say, watch out for them as well. Yeah. Fa- favourites going into that world? Do you think France might actually be favourites playing at home? Well, you, you like the way... This- the team yeah, you like the way they're trending, eh? But like, yeah. I mean, you can't look past you know the box. You can't look past the All Blacks. I think if anything, the fact that for tears now there hasn't been rugby, it's going to be way more open yeah. than what you think it's going to be because you know everyone's now going to sort of get there. Everyone's you know there's not scar tissue from the year before or not. You can't throw away the normal Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. I always feel like they're almost Australia's building. Australia's playing nicely, but they always feel due that a, a, a Northern Hemisphere team is going to go. So maybe France. Um, you, you know, it's a beauty. You know, it's know. a beauty. We're two years off. Whatever we think now will change totally. 100%. 100%. In two yeah, years now. Yeah. It'll be yeah, totally agree. different. Definitely. You know what will be different as well? Tell us. Will be bad jokes today. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, Billy, right, yeah. like I said, we had quite a few, um, quite a few people sitting in videos. We had some comments as well, and the guy said, um, "I can tell any joke. You won't catch it anyway." That's my first bad joke. <laughs> no. Is that too much? <laughs> okay. What we gonna do today? What we gonna What we gonna do today? Okay. 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 Yeah. We're gonna share the responsibilities. Okay. So we've got three papers. You choose one. Each one of us. Gonna tell one joke. Two jokes. Two jokes. Two okay. jokes. Yeah. Okay. So three. One, two, three. Um, Was it your handwriting? No, it's not. Okay, well then. So I don't. I haven't seen the jokes either. So you can pick. I'm gonna. Okay, Billy, you because you. Don't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so choose two. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Okay. I'll go, I'll go yeah. No, we need it, you need to just pick two. Like, I love it, I love it, I love it. There's wild things on I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. This is not normal I love it, I love a little naughty, I, I love a little naughty one, so I'll go with the naughty one up front. Yeah, yes. But hold on, you've got to look at me, I'm okay. telling you. Okay, like, you know how it works, Billy, you know how it works. So, not the teller of the joke. Yeah. No, the teller of the joke can laugh a bit, but the listeners are not allowed to laugh. They laugh, yeah, okay? I do. So if we laugh, then you get a point. Because cocks first. And a puppy have in common? I don't know. A wet nose. 
it's a good one. Yeah. Can I go for my second one, or do I have to wait for you guys? <laughs> I like it. You're good at it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. Billy, Billy, okay. I'll go. Okay, Billy, you go. Okay, you go. Here we go. Why couldn't the toilet paper cross the road? Because it got stuck in a crack. I get you, love. I get you, love. I get you, love. I'm laughing because you. I like it because you're laughing. Ah, because you're laughing for AJ. Okay, one for me. What's the score? You won one all. One all. I've got no idea. Hugh, Hugh, old score. One all. You each got one. Okay. Okay. Here's my joke. Okay. See. Okay. What does? What does? <laughs> Go. What does the mafia <laughs> have in common? <laughs> We can't use that. No. <laughs> oh. oh, we can't use uh, that. Okay, I'm gonna go again. Uh, this is, guys. This is by far the best uh, bad jokes ever. Okay, we're keeping it to this. Okay, what's the difference? You can unscrew the light bulb. <laughs> but a pregnant woman. It's amazing. <laughs> we've, we've just lost every single pregnant woman who was watching uh, our show. She's yeah. gone. Did you guys laugh? <sighs> it's one or I it's, wanted it's to one laugh to because, everyone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did I get a point? I didn't get a point. Okay, I'll okay. go with my. Is this my second last one? Yes, my yes, first your last one, one. Yeah, it's your last one. <laughs> what do you call a, a fake noodle? The imposter. Why did you? Why do you have a um, Russian accent when you do it? I'm trying to be Italian. I missed uh, it. I okay. missed the brief. Ah, okay, Valley. Okay. And a golf ball. A guy will actually look for a golf ball. Big luck for you. <laughs> I can't read the last one. <laughs> <laughs> two, uh, that's two points. Guys, ah, oh, damn it! I can't do it. It's the best night of my life. Uh, if if they've got red um, asterisks next to them, I don't know what that means. Does that mean they're naughty? Yeah. Okay, yeah. my last one. Actually, a good one. How do billboards talk? Sign language. Billboards. That's yeah, a very good one. It's, it's, it's above board. Have you got two, two? Ah, uh, that's two. I got two, two. I don't think I got two? a point. I got two. I got two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, each, each one. We, we need to do one more because some of our jokes that um, our social media person put together is a little bit oh. under the belt, and we're afraid that we might lose some of our 27 followers. So we're going to do one each more. I've only got one that I can do. I'm going to go. <clears throat> what did Michael Jackson call his denim store? Billy Jeans. Billy Jean is not my lover. No. Jesus. Like a tune. Nice tune. Good Okay. Very nice tune. Um, okay. I'm done. Yeah, I, I mean, the rest of them are, are lacquer, but they're seriously naughty. So the only one I can use is what kind of shoes does a thief wear? Uh, Sneakers. Yeah, it's good, right? Yeah, it's sneakers. sneakers. It makes sneakers. sense. It makes sense because when they, Sneaker. you know, because they want to go, they want to sneak in. Like, no, I get you. It makes sense. Okay. Really, don't mess this up. Eh? Just a normal one, yeah? Have you heard 
the gossip about butter. 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 Have you heard the gossip about butter? Actually, no, I shouldn't spread it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, this, I can't read that yeah. so I have to take that. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yo, that, that was that was not, that was not like. Uh, I think we should continue with that, really. I think we need to wrap up. That's yeah, we now do. we're done. We're done. Stick a fork in me. I'm done. Um, really, what we're gonna do? One more thing is we're gonna. If you can select the best question from our fans, um, <clears throat> which question was your favorite one? Can you remember? Um, I would say the one where you asked me all my positions and does the coach back your coach. Okay, yeah. yeah I think that so was a, there that we was go. A, that was a very um, good one. Dude from Bethlehem. Thanks for sending your question. A jersey's on its way to you. Signed by Skalkberger, Willy LaRue, and me. Wonderful. Thanks for answering John's WhatsApps coming on the show. <laughs> Thanks for the round of golf. <laughs> Pity about your partner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he hasn't lived it down any second. But like the main thing that I take out of this is, you know, how resilient you've been in your career. And like we've always loved watching you play. And um, give it horns, enjoy it, Toyota of a Blitz. I know you're off there after November. And um, yeah, you never know. Maybe we sneak another World Cup out of you. I, I surely hope so. And uh, good luck with the, the finishing of the finishing touches on the home at Valdivie. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, I've always been a fan and watching it while I was in Japan. Nice. Um, it kept me busy in the week there. So, uh, yeah, thank you for having me on it and I appreciate it. Yeah, thank tell you. the people in, in Japan about it, okay? Well, yeah, and then you translate for them. Um, <clears throat> Vili, thank you so much. Um, 70 test matches for South Africa. Um, I think you've been you've been fantastic in terms of what you what you bring to the Bok, Bok team. And you know, yes, there's been some criticism that's that's part of it, but you've been able to rise above it. Good luck for the end of year tour. Um, yeah, and hopefully we can we can have a successful one. So to all the to all the viewers, thanks for tuning in again. Please follow us on our YouTube channel. Um, and Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe and like. With Subscribe and like me. Um, and just do stuff on <laughs> social media. Until next time. Yeah, till next Perfect. time. We will see you again. <laughs> and the bad joke's <laughs> really good. And we love you all. And we're going to go now because this place needs to close. Bye. Ha, 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 ha.